Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. Okay, today as I'm premiering this video, I am 55 years old. I know. Today is my birthday. Yeah, yeah. I was born way, way back for you youngins. January 30th, 1968. Was it a snowy day? Was it a sunny day? I have no idea. I could ask my mom, but I don't have time for that. I'm here to talk to you about a journey, a journey of 55 years, sort of, but how it intersects with James Bond. I mean, this is a James Bond channel, and this has a lot to do with the journey of James Bond, and I will explain everything in nauseating detail, but I'll tell you who this video is really for. Many of you out there, I don't care what age or gender, political proclivity you are, you have those days where you're just not feeling the best version of yourself. Instagram and even this YouTube video, I've got a ring light right now on, I've got a nice blank background, I made sure my hair was combed. We always put our best versions of ourselves out there. I mean, who on Instagram picks the worst picture of themselves? It doesn't happen. But trust me, everybody, including this guy, this guy, has days where he's like, this is me now? And I thought to myself a few months ago, what if I started a challenge, sort of an operations, a mission to get into the best version of myself? It would definitely include the physical condition that I'm in, heading into 55, right? Not an easy task. Gravity, time sort of weighs against you. When you get to be my age, mm -hmm, yeah, you'll see all well, you 35 year olds right now. Mm, I could put anything in my mouth at that age too. It didn't come out right. You know what I mean. But, but it wasn't just about the physicality. It can't be that because that's not just what defines you, right? It has to be your mindset, your philosophy, your career, your hobby, how you're enjoying James Bond right now. So I wanted to take all these things and make it the pinnacle of what I could be. Ah, uh, ooh, Operation Pinnacle. So Operation Pinnacle was born to have a several month journey where I would change bad habits, maybe even change good habits to ramp them up, but go into the whole idea that today, when this is premiering, January 30th, my 55th birthday, that I would be the best version of myself. So, spoiler alert, early on, two minutes in, did it work? Meh, yeah, I know, I know. You probably expected me to come on here rippling away, abs all chiseled, maybe you didn't expect that. It's a little too much to expect. But some of it worked and some of it didn't, but there's some major aha moments and a lot of it has to do with James Bond. So let's, let's start, first of all, why am I talking about this on a James Bond journey? Well, first thing you need to know, is, uh, yeah, wasn't always like this, wearing all the bar brown shirts, Omega watches, things like that. I was a chunky child. Yeah, I, I think they call it husky. Whenever my mom bought me suits, it would be in the husky section. Isn't that great? Yeah, I was named after a dog, the husky, because of the blue eyes. I don't think so. I think it had to do with my love handles, my muffin top, and that's fine. That's fine, I was, I was brought up like a veal. You know, didn't have neighbors really. My grandmother was my neighbor. I had Star Wars figures. So I had a diet of, uh, you know, Stouffer's French pizza, ice cream, and Star Wars figures, and occasionally Tang, which I don't know if you're keeping up, but Tang is not orange juice. So that was my diet. Love my mom if she's watching this right now. She's going to destroy me. Best mother and father ever. Just let me get that out of the way so I don't get sued. Yeah. But, but as I went on, you know, became a little bit thinner in high school and college, realized that, oh, the, the lady people, the lady people uh, like to have somebody that's disciplined, a little more svelte, got a little svelte, uh, was able to then woo, I don't know how, I still a mystery today, this young lady right here, Danielle, yeah, that's a much, much younger version of us. She hasn't changed, but I look like Harry Potter there on a bad day. But then, then what happened was I sort of ballooned up. I got married, I got comfortable. Some of you can maybe, I don't know, understand how this happens. And here's my wedding photo. Oh, look at that. And then, yeah, yeah, uh, here is sort of me throughout my younger days. However, as some of you know who have followed my channel, uh, 
Daniel Craig. I mean, it was Pierce Brosnan who got me into style. You know, when I saw Pierce Brosnan in GoldenEye, I was like, oh. And then Tomorrow Never Dies, I was like, oh, oh. You mean, that's what Bond looks like, and he carries himself so well. So the way I carry myself, the way I focus on style and luxury, clothing, that was Pierce Brosnan. But it was Daniel Craig in Casino Royale with this picture right here, you know it well. It comes out of the water, and I don't know, every guy in the world was like, oh God, what am I gonna do now? How am I gonna keep my wife on the farm when she sees Paris? So I basically stepped back at that point and said, I've got to surround myself with wellness. I've got to surround myself with getting into shape because I was really out of shape. I was a, an executive that just, you know, had become atrophied over time. I was successful at business, successful at my family. Why the, the very physicality of me was a D, maybe not an F, you know? I wasn't, you know, medically in a bad situation, but I certainly, yeah, not much to look at. Anyway, I, I know this is tough. You're like, David, you're, you're being so one dimensional and surface oriented, but please tell me if this hasn't crossed your minds, you're not being honest with yourself. So what did I do? I started to get into shape. I started to work out. I, I engaged people and became friends with people that had also transformed themselves and asked questions, seek to understand. What did you do right? What are you eating? I changed my eating habits. I changed my workout habits. I went to a gym. The hell's a gym? That's something that I, I drove really fast past when I was going to get ice cream. Now I actually would stop and not get the ice cream occasionally. But what happened over time is I had a bit of a transformation, which was great. You know, just built up muscle, etc. Still hadn't kind of whittled down, but now this thing, quantum of solace, timing, skyfall timing, I was really focused on the whole style aspect but also style meets fitness and your body type, all with the bond orientation. My, my emulation, my inspiration was James Bond. It was Daniel Craig, it had to be because he's like two months younger than me. He's my age, and I get it. We're gonna have a Bond in Bond 26 that's much younger than me, but for now, for now, right this second, as I'm standing here at 55, the current James Bond is my age. So I had no excuse. I'm like, if Bond could be that, that pinnacle of his physical self, why couldn't I at least make that attempt? Now, I'm not getting paid for it. I don't have professional trainers or a special diet that I can follow all day long, but in my everyday life, I could make those appropriate changes. Now, I'm here to tell you something as we're into this. Bond as an inspiration started to neutralize over time, started to get a little bit quieter because then I was getting into my own thing of like, oh, now I'm now it's a competition with myself. I want to be the best version of myself. I'm not trying to look like Daniel Craig. I'm not trying to look like Daniel Craig in clothing either. I'm trying to look like the best version of David Zeritsky and the workouts became therapeutic. Literally, I would have my coffee and then I would come down here. I'm in my gym right now and work out as part of my daily routine, my therapy, if you will. Now, Whatever you're doing with medication and supplements, I'm not here to negate that. I'm not. I think it's great whatever you're doing. I support it. If it's working for you, great. I do not take vitamin supplements. I don't take medication. I have a little Claritin D during my like hay fever time, and that's pretty much it. The reason I say that is, is some of you are watching this video to say, what did you do, David, along this pinnacle? So clearly, pretty healthy for a 54 year old going into this operation pinnacle to get the best version. I thought to myself, let me connect on how I'm feeling stamina wise. Do I go upstairs? Am I huffing and puffing? Or am I, am I able to do more, more hikes, more walks that Danielle and I love to do? Or am I starting to feel, you know, a little creaky, you know, at this age, and I'm not ready for the tennis balls and the walker yet, but am I, am I getting to that level? And how do I look? Yeah, I know, vanity, ego, that's going to play a part of it. And then the other thing is, how am I feeling mentally? Okay, so two plus months ago when I did this, I took stock in myself. And I said, you know something, and maybe some of you heard this on the podcast, I got a little, little back bag going, like, like right here, I had, <laughs> here's a little spoiler alert, I don't have it anymore. Yeah, 
we'll, we'll get to that. I had a little bit of like, it would like burp, like that. And when you put on pants, you know, you're like, look, they fit fine. <gasps> they fit fine, I swear to God. And then you just can't breathe. Um, or worse, you know, when you wear shirts that are fitted like this, you can see, you don't think people can see, but then you turn to the side. It's a very different thing. Don't forget, the world is a three-way mirror. It's probably six-way mirror because they can see behind you too. But it can see everywhere. You can't really hide. I couldn't hide. So that was an area I wanted to work on. I also wanted to get a little bit more chest than I did. I was about a 40. Um, I wanted to get a little bit more bulk in the arm, in the, in the triceps, and the biceps. There were certain things I looked at. Shoulders I was fine with, but definition, fine. But yes, there was a part of me that said, David, you want to be in the best physical shape of your life. What did I do differently? Well, first of all, let's take you around my gym and I can probably give you a better idea. So many of you have seen this image before. This is uh, my collection area, nice expansive area. There is the outdoors to my basement, hot tub. Oh, I, I have to rake the leaves. A little barren out there for winter, but here, this is the entrance to my gym. Somewhere between trespassers will be eaten and diamonds are forever. You can find this glass opening and boom, there it is. Uh, right off the bat, you see, as you look down, bamboo floors. So I got double bamboo floors with a spring backing to it. And this makes it very cushy, very easy to jump on, do tumbles, whatever I need to do in the gym. And then right over here in this alcove, I have some weaponry, a lot of nunchucks, mini staffs, etc. I use this a few times a week for coordination, cardiovascular movement, just to keep the blood flowing, usually before my exercise. And I tell you, it is great from a memory movement type of standpoint. I just kind of run around in here, run around in the collection with nunchucks, make sure I don't smash into furniture. And it's a great hand-eye coordination, especially at my age. Over in the corner, you'll see what looks like a hat rack, but there are swords in it and a staff. And again, more swinging, more movement, the more sort of jumping around and knowing that there is a, a tool or a weapon in my hand, the more I can figure out coordination. And speaking of coordination, this is the number one piece of equipment I have. It's a pull-up, it's a chin-up bar. You can do dips. I typically don't. This is where I do a lot of my P90X. You can see here it's the Stamina PT1690. It's relatively old. I use it all the time. You can see the wear on the handles themselves because I use this three times a week with my P90X pulling and pushing uh, and it taxes my muscles. So this takes me about 29 to 35 minutes to incorporate into the P90X. But more often than not, what I usually mix in between that are push-ups, four different types. I use these perfect push-up because what I love about this, look at this, the handle is soft, gives you a little distance, but movement as well. Uh, you can use these anywhere, and I like that it keeps you anchored to the ground. But I do uh, mid-size wide push-ups, staggered push-ups, and what I call Spider-Man push-ups, where my legs are kicked in different directions. Ultimately, this bow flex, this, this interchangeable weights on here, bow flex, dumbbell, has become a bit of a godsend because I don't have a whole rack of weights anymore. Three times a week, I am doing lifting. I am doing four different types of isolation lifts, shoulder lifts, and you can see I can change it up to 52.5 pounds so I get all the weight limits that I can do. Again, keeping it very spartan and light but still understanding that I can do movements and lifts even at my age. But the gym has something kind of interesting. Uh, that's this corner where I can do weights and it's all sectioned off. But <laughs> over here, I've got uh, my little friend. My little friend. Uh, you call him probably a slam man or a bop man. I call him odd job because I painted a mustache. Of course, I had to put a quantum of solace puffy on him. And it's not to beat up Quantum of Solace, but this has a nice weighted base. I can do boxing, I can do fencing on it, and I do. Twice a week, I do movement around this guy. Gives, us good, gives me good resistance of what it would be like to go against a baddie like that. 
But the number one thing that has absolutely changed my trajectory in this Operation Pinnacle is the smallest. It's the least expensive. It's this $29 ab roller from Amazon. And what you do is, you know, you can see it right here. There's, there's a lot of different versions. This is the one that I got. It comes with not just the ab roller itself, but this rubberized knee pad that you put your knees on. And you simply, and I mean, this is so simple, you just roll yourself out, roll your body out with your knees still on the pad, and everything starts to shake. Your core starts to shake. Your lower back starts to shake. Everything starts to move and you get very tense. This is better than any kind of ab exercise I've worked, but it has really started to whittle down my lower back. And that's why I go to this thing four times a week. I'm hitting this always in the morning, always after my major workout, and it really fits the bill for me. So all in all, this is it. This is what I do all of my gym exercises in. Just to give you a sense, uh, this is where I find myself seven days a week and will continue to. Okay, so the physical stuff, that's one aspect, but I did change my diet. And here's a bit of an aha moment. Again, think James Bond. The James Bond Fleming, I mean, he's eating ham sandwiches and heavy things, but we know the actors behind James Bond had a different diet, especially Daniel Craig. What I did was I was eating a lot of protein. I mean, a lot of protein, like much more protein. Vegetables would incorporate them in. And I did something. Here's the, here, like I said, first, aha. I actually amped up my vegetables nutty, like 70% like vegetables and 30% protein, kind of give and take. I also got rid of almost all the sugars. I'd have a treat every now and then, but not too much. I also cut back on my alcohol. I, I dwindled that down. I wasn't having a drink every night. I know, I know, after work. I, and it wasn't like after work, like drowning my sorrows type of drink. It was like after dinner, I wanna sit down and relax. And maybe Danielle and I are talking and we're in our great room and I just wanna pour myself a Johnny Walker Black and just sip it and nothing wrong with that. But I did cut it out mostly from my weekdays and kept it to the weekends. And I didn't go nuts. I never go nuts on the weekend as far as alcohol. So there were some physical things, typical foods I would eat, for example, is, uh, a pick and chicken, here's a picture of it right now. This is literally a pick and chicken sitting in my refrigerator right now, delicious. And I would just break it and eat half of it a day, sometimes half of it for lunch. Um, but, the, but the vegetables were very high. I found something out. When I started this, <laughs> I started gaining weight. Um, the vegetables and things like that, I don't know, I just felt a little bit sluggish. So. I'm here to confess, I'm not here to tell you the perfect diet. YouTube has a million perfect diets and I'm not a dietitian, and I don't know you. I don't know your blood type or your body type. I'm telling you what I did. So very quickly, when this wasn't really working, I went back to higher protein, lower vegetables, and then positive things started changing. Uh, I still kept with vegetables. I definitely had a portion of vegetables, but it was more like 30% vegetables, 70% protein. I'm sorry. So I would basically work out in the morning. I would have my Fairlife 42 milligrams within 15 minutes of working out for that immediate protein where the muscle can hold on to it. Okay? It's a technique. It's worked for me. You could argue it in the comments below. I'm sure you will. But then for lunch, I would typically have spinach and no dressing. I, I don't like dressing on my salad. I know. I want to taste the vegetables. I would have carrots and spinach and all types of things like that. Maybe a piece of fruit. I know, lots of sugars, natural sugars. And then I would have a bolus of protein, usually chicken or clean pork or something like that. Very little red meat. I really cut back on the red meat. But I would have a piece of chicken and then suddenly what happened after a few weeks is I started to bulk up. Now I know you can't tell because YouTube is like this, maybe you're watching on a phone, I don't know. But I went from in two months, give or take, I went from a 40, 41 to a solid 42 chest. Um, doing the exercises I just talked about, I didn't change it. I didn't, I wasn't doing bench or anything like that. I'm sure I'd benefit from that or clean lifts or a lot of things that you guys do, but I didn't. The other thing is um, I found that my, 
it's again hard to tell not bad for 55 but my biceps started to get much more by the way i am so pale right now i'm looking at myself in my phone and i am pale i am like the underbelly of a fish pale but if i wasn't i'd have more definition but i did start to see more definition more of the like the veins popping out um i am flexing right now sorry more tricep definition here more of like the cup my shoulders everything started to get great and yes yes as i'll stand here all right right 55 not too bad uh started to get a little bit more of kind of those little divots on the side which is great two and two and a half months of just doing that and changing my diet cutting back so it was working so you think oh my gosh david this is this is a great video you you succeeded this is not the best shape of my life and i'm, I'm this is me being authentic and being honest because i have to be to you so in this journey i'm in better shape than i was six months ago and I'm in a more of a shape than I wanted to be. Yes, but I'm not in the best shape of my life. Let me show you something. <laughs> sorry, sorry if I'm like blowing your eyes away. So this picture that you're looking at right now was two years ago, two years ago. Um, it's me standing to the side just so you can see that I, the, my belly fat was gone. Um, my, my arms were good, they were defined. They weren't as big as they are now, but they were well defined. But my belly fat was gone. Like I was seriously like pulling up my pants like this. Suits, I had to get the button of my suit sort of adjusted by my tailor. In some cases, I may have been almost too thin for some, but right now I'm carrying a little bit of weight right here. If I was wearing a bathing suit instead of an all of our brown shirt, you would see it. There wasn't a lot of definition, certainly not as much definition as this. So just here to tell you that from an overall fitness standpoint from a look standpoint purely purely aesthetics this is not the pinnacle this is not operation pinnacle success from an, an ego aesthetics standpoint it's good i think it's good for 55 i hope you would agree um, but it's not the best i've ever been we're going to get back to that in a second from a fitness standpoint i am the best i've ever been i mean I go upstairs like this, like Daniel Craig running on the crane in Casino Royale, uh, hiking, walking. I can't walk slow uh, from a cardiovascular standpoint, from a wellness standpoint, from how I feel in the morning jumping out of bed to my energy levels. I don't know if you could tell. I get up very often at three or four in the morning, I used to get up at five. I, I'm sure there will be a time when my head explodes, but after 10 years of doing that, I'm still doing okay ladies and gentlemen, but that's, that's an important thing because one of the aspects I've got to look at is how do I feel? It's not just looks. It can't be just looks. Cause if you're sitting there and you look great and you're an Adonis and you're walking around like this, dun, 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 hello, that's not good. I feel very flexible. And that's one of the things, stamina, flexibility, endurance. These are the things that you lose. As you get older, I'm looking at you, Kyle and Luke, trust me, you, you start to lose it over time, gravity and time and, and just age takes its toll. It's a little bit harder, but this is a moment where you can say, hold on a second, age is just a number. I don't have to relate it back to my success or failure on how I feel. So I feel as good. In fact, when I do cardiovascular, which is a part of my P90X3, is like your heart is going bang, 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 bang. But every now and then I will listen to a podcast. And what I do is I actually do this horrible thing of which if I showed you, I would probably lose a lot of followers. I do this like walk dance where I kind of walk and dance like an idiot and I have no rhythm. I'm telling you, you can see right now, I have no rhythm, but I'll show you a taste of it. I'll put on some music kind of go like this and I sort of run around my collection and I kind of look at my collection I sort of do this like weird dance thing and so if you were god forbid you were here in my basement you would see me like running and I kind of do this like two-step and again I cannot dance I cannot do anything but I shuck a jab and I move and I kind of do like this and then that and then it's pretty crazy yeah I mean it's it's that so 
My point being is that I do this thing and I just, most of it is wellness up here. It's making me feel good psychologically. I feel great for the day. It's like brushing your teeth and taking a shower, taking a shave and getting a haircut. It's all those things that psychologically affect you to make you feel good for the day. And it just works the cardiovascular, the balance, the core, everything together. And I'm listening to a Bond podcast. So it's everything. And now let's relate this back to Bond. Bond lives a life of sports, activity, mayhem, fitness, but also extreme action. So you know that he's ready to move, to shake, to be flexible. He's got to get into fights on trains. I don't know if you've seen any of the movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he does a lot. And he just comes back for more. And that's the other thing is the ability to come back for more once you've taken a hit, whether it's a physical hit or a psychological hit. Now, we've got to extend it beyond fitness and physicality because that wasn't all that's just the pinnacle. So if we're keeping score at home, fitness wise, I've reached the pinnacle. The way I look wise from a physicality standpoint, maybe just under, but under by just a little bit. All right, let's move on. So career, this was a big part of it because again, I'm getting into the whole idea of philosophy and happiness and James Bond. Now James Bond, I don't care what iteration you're looking at, that includes you, no time to die. He is a man of duty, queen and country, now king and country. And one of the things is he really does love his career. Does he go AWOL from time to time? Does he get upset? Yes, because that's his passion behind his duty and what he's doing. And he feels that he's right in what he's doing. There's a, there's a lot behind that. So I had to step back and think from a career standpoint, um, I oversee an agency network and I'm the president, great people, title aside, at the end of the day, what I do is I connect with amazing people that work with me and amazing clients. And that's it. I mean, do I go and am I satisfied with working on these big strategies that help in the pharmaceutical and healthcare space? Yes. Do I feel like I'm well compensated for it and that I'm recognized for my efforts? Yes. Do I come home and I grouse and I go, rah, rah, rah. no. Do I think about things of compromise and what I would do in the future? Of course, we're human beings, right? I'm not here to, you know, I, the Superman cape is in the other room. It's not on my back right now. Nobody's a Superman or a Superwoman. So with my job, I would say I am satisfied to very satisfied. How about that? So, so good, good. So from a pinnacle standpoint, is it at the pinnacle? I'd say it's like just right under. Now let's move to James Bond. And I mean the Bond community. I mean this channel and what I'm doing. I would say at this point in Operation Pinnacle, as I sit here at 55 years of age, and I think about the evolution of the channel. I think about when I first did my first writing, my blog for Remert uh, of Bond Lifestyle, still an amazing friend of mine. Um, love how his channel is exploded and evolved. But I was a writer, I would do a video every now and then, and then he was the one that said, yeah, you know, you should do something on your own. And here I was, and I launched this channel in 2012. I had done a bunch of videos, I slapped them up on there, and then really just went gangbusters. How the channel has evolved to involve uh, brands and events, locations, how it's evolved, uh, authors and writing, and not just the film bond, but the literature bond, but most of all, how it's evolved to help me embrace some of the strongest friendships that I've ever had. This community who I just see themselves lift each other up. How it doesn't matter if you're creating content. It doesn't matter the label on your shirt or your watch. If right here in your heart, is heart right, right, it's a little lower. If in your heart you have a passion for the James Bond franchise, if it's something that you connect with for whatever reason, at any level of fanaticism, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we've all connected to each other. This is such a tight, clingy community. Now, I've become incredibly close friends with a handful of people because I believe that 
when you say friendship, friendship can be very, very broad. There are some people, yeah, I hang out with either because of geographical aspects, philosophical aspects. Some are, you know, their spouses are good friends with my wife. I mean, there's the whole bevy of reasons why. But every single day, I meet somebody new on my channel. I engage with somebody new or I include them in a discussion. And that is absolutely the spice of life. The fact that you can go and do some interesting things with amazing people. If I sat here in my walkout basement alone and sat here and watched a Bond film, my enjoyment would not be 1% of what it is today. It is because of all of you. It's because of this channel. It's because twice a week I get to speak to you and, and flex. See me flex? Flex my creativity in what I do and a couple people watch. That to me is absolutely amazing and I will continue that. My last thing I'm going to be talking about with Operation Pinnacle, and it may be a bit of an aha, I will never do an Operation Pinnacle again. And let me explain why. I'm a believer, and I think this is a Bond thing too, so stay with me on the Bond aspect. I'm a believer that Bond is always climbing up that mountain, either physically or metaphorically, but stay with me, to reach that level of getting better, getting better with himself, getting better with his support of his country, his job, getting over on the bad guy. The bad guys get bigger and more extreme, etc. But quite frankly, he lives life to the fullest. That's what I've always loved about the character. It's not the, you know, the, the murder and the mayhem. That's kind of fun for a Saturday afternoon on a rainy day. But the fact that he goes to these locations and he eats locally and he lives this life and, and, and as luxurious as he can do in these moments of, of, of despair, he's still living life like he's going to have murder for breakfast and that murder could be on him. That whole idea of today is the present, which is a gift. And especially on my birthday, I think about that a lot. The gift that I'm opening up today is that I'm living here in the presence at the highest level I could. So why have a date like January 30th, 2023, that that's going to be the pinnacle of who I am? Why would the pinnacle ever stop? There's an old saying. And I don't know who said it. Methuselah? Who? I don't know. There's an old saying that goes, when you climb to the top of one mountain, it's only so you can see that there's a higher mountain ahead of you. And then you need to climb that one. So about a week or two ago, as I was heading here and I'm like, oh man, my abs, there's no abs. You know how I'm not going to be able to whip off my shirt and show my, I'm gonna, all these stupid thoughts crept into my mind that were time-based. And here I am trying to talk to you and tell you that at 55, it's not about time. It's not. It's about the journey and the man or the woman or the person that, that enjoys the journey more than the destination, they're the winners. I loved this Operation Pinnacle every step of the way. I'm going to continue loving it even to 56 and hopefully longer than that until I'm eventually eaten by a shark. By the way, that's how I'm going to die. I don't know if you knew that. Some people just know how they're going to die. Shark attack. Am I going to, is that going to keep me out of the ocean? No. Interestingly enough, it's just going to happen. But seriously, I am not going to look at this as a time-based thing anymore. I think that's undue pressure. I think that it's not realistic. And I think that if I'm enjoying myself, and I did, I, I had, you know, again, it's birthday weekend just came by. I had champagne, family, all these things. You've got to enjoy the journey that you're on and not just set it as a waypoint, as a date. We are not a GPS tracking system. As Robinson says, we are humans going through a very human life. And that's what I hope my channel and even this journey has tried to show people. And certainly it showed myself. All right. Well, I've got to go and uh, get ready for a birthday dinner with my lovely wife, Danielle. I hope this has been interesting and helpful. What's your journey? Maybe you have one. Maybe you have particular goals. Put them down in the comments. I read every comment. I mean, I react to every comment because, you know, time, but
please tell me what some of your goals are. What are you trying to be? Maybe even what you're dissatisfied with. We'll keep on this journey. This has been kind of fun. And in the meantime, this has been the birthday boy. The birthday boy, the birthday boy. I don't know what that is. David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience. I will see you all real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from The Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.